up. This is an introduction to gas chromatography with mass spectrometry detection, or GCMS. This technique is adequate for the separation of volatile components and then detection by mass spectrometry, which involves the detection not only of the molecular masses, but also the masses of the fragments. This picture illustrates the ability to not only the detect these compounds by mass spectrometry, but also by uh, the nose, which in this particular case uh, is known as olfactometry. These two techniques that are complementary to each other stre stress the fact that this is a technique an to analyze volatile comp compounds or compounds that you can smell directly. In order to use this technique, one of the first things to do is to introduce the sample. The sample is usually introduced by using a syringe that could either contain a gas or a liquid. It could also be introduced by using a syringe in which a fiber made of polymeric material uh, has entrapped or absorbed the analyte or analytes of interest. In addition to the syringe and the needle, it's important to have an injection port. This injection port illustrated on the right side of this diagram Here's the syringe being introduced into that. It's characterized by the ability to provide a high temperature, temperature higher than the lowest boiling point of the compounds in the sample, so that they can become volatile and analyzed by this particular technology. The technique then consists of uh, transferring the analyte onto a column. In the column, there are going to be two main components. The first component is a mobile phase, which is a gas. Helium, argon, nitrogen, and hydrogen are common gases used in this particular technique. This carrier gas has the ability to carry with it the volatile compounds throughout the column that could vary from one to several meters in length. The column is made out of few silica, is open, and right in inside, in, in the inner wall, there is a, the second component, which is the stationary phase. The stationary phase is usually polymeric in nature, but still in the liquid form. This thin layer that coats the inner component of, 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 the, of, the, of the column is the one that provides the ability to partition compounds between the gas phase and the stationary phase of the column. This uh, stationary phases are usually made of siloxanes, illustrated by this general structure at the bottom of the right side of the slide. The representation of the data of, uh, of a GC experiment is called a chromatogram. In a, in a, in a chromatogram, we're going to have a plot of intensity versus time. Every time a component of the sample comes out, it will produce a band or a peak, named here 1 through 5. The first compound that appears here corresponds to air. The second one corresponds to the least retained component, and the last one corresponds to the most retained component. In this particular example, ethane. To detect these components, it's important to have something that is sensitive and compatible with the molecular structure of these components. For instance, one can imagine using a flame, like a flame ionization detector, that will char and produce uh, elemental uh, components that will carry a ch uh, an electrical charge. However, in this particular exper uh, experiment, we are going to be using a mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometry is, is, a, is an excellent technique for detection for GC because it provides the mass and therefore the identification of compounds that are present in the sample. So now we will focus on a mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer then needs to be connected to the exit of the column in which we will have the ability to form compounds in the gas phase, which are already coming from the column, ionize them, then sort them in a mass analyzer, and then after detection, producing the mass, a mass spectrum. The mass spectrum will be described shortly. Let's begin by looking at the ionization component of the, ma of the, of the mass spectrometer. The mass spectrometer that is part of the detector of the GC uses electron impact ionization. This form of ionization consists or is based on the production of 
electrons that are at high energy that are directed towards an anode and when they collide with components coming from the sample produce fragments. A generic representation of those fragments or these ions are, is represented here where M represents the molecular mass of the ion of the compound an electron which then upon collision produce uh, an ion and the release of two electrons. So when a component travels from the sample through the shower of electrons, the ions will be produced, keeping in mind that it's not only this ion, but also fragments of these ions that will be detected. The second component of this corresponds to the separation and sorting of ions. For that, the instrument component is called a mass analyzer. In this particular experiment, it is a quadrupole, which works as a filter for ions. Let's begin by reviewing the structure of this mass, mass analyzer or quadrupole. Here in this representation, we have four poles. The ones that are, that are opposite to each other have the same charge, like minus and minus, and these ones indicated by plus have the same charge. Adjacent poles have the same magnitude but opposite sign. The voltage then has, each of these poles will have a voltage. The voltage is made of two components, an RF, RF component or radio frequency component and a DC component. And it's important to note then that this will be a direct component, the DC, and the RF will be oscillating as a function of time. So it is important to consider then that when these ions travel through the poles, they will experience attraction and repulsion depending on the charge of the ion and the charge of the pole and because the ions have mass, they will have inertia. Heavy ions will tend to move and follow almost a direct trajectory, while light ions or low mass ions will tend to move towards the poles or repel from the poles faster than the other ones. Because of this principle then, ions can travel through the poles and if they are attracted strongly by the poles or uh, deflected uh, strongly by, because they are light in mass, they will collide and get lost against the poles. However, some ions might be able to make it all the way through the quadrupole system towards the ion detector zone. For example, if we have a correct selection of the RF and the DC voltages, we might be able to select ion M1. Similarly, if we select different voltages, RF2 and DC2, we might be able to select ion M2. And as a, as a third example, if we now change the voltage to RF3 and DC3, we might be able to select the ion M3. So here the point is that by selecting the correct combination of the oscillating and the constant voltage, we can transmit a selective ion towards the ion detector. And if we do this as a function of time, we can get a mass spectrum range that corresponds to the results of the output of the mass spectrum. So GCMS really has two components in terms of output. The first component is the chromatogram that indicates intensity versus function of time. And since we're using a mass spectrometer, we are detecting all the ions together corresponding to these peaks or bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The second output, let's focus on peak 5 here, which is ethane, will be a mass spectrum that is defined by the mass analyzer in which we have a plot of relative intensity of an ion versus the mass to charge ratio of that particular ion. The mass spectrum of ion will basically provide unique information about the formula, the exact mass, which represents the mass due to the uh, elemental masses of all the components, and the nominal mass that corresponds to the integer part of the exact mass, in this particular example, 30. The mass spectrum as well will provide unique features that will help the, the experimenter compare that with a database to identify effectively the, the compound of interest. For example, here we have the parent ion of ethane, which is exactly the same formula with the loss of an electron. 
And we also have the base ion, which corresponds to the tallest ion present, which in this case corresponds to C2H4, corresponding to the loss of two hydrogens from, from an ion. So it is then this combination of mass spectrum and the separation that makes GC, MS, an excellent technique for analysis of volatile compounds. In order to implement and use this technique in this experiment, we will be using a GCMS experiment or instrument. This instrument, and in summary, consists of an injection port in which the sample is delivered through the syringe, a column that is kept at high temperature and through which the carrier gas will carry the different analytes and as they partition and interact with the column, Finally, there's gonna be a transfer line to an ion source where electron ionization will uh, produce ions and fragments, a mass analyzer or a quadrupole that will separate the ions based on, based on their mass to charge ratio. And finally, a data system will provide the spectrum of interest. For more information on this technique, see the textbook Skug, Holler and Crouch, Principles of Instrumental Analysis, sixth edition.